Father, thank you for a good morning that uh, we're able to make it safely here in fellowship and get your word. We want to pray for those that are sick, got COVID and um, feeling under the weather and, and just all the other prayer requests that we've had over the past weeks and things that people need healing on. Uh, let the Holy Spirit lead us today and um, that we gain knowledge and knowledge of your will and we enjoy the scriptures and just let the Bible speak for itself and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so, uh, um, so last time I spoke we were in Colossians, so I'm going to do continuing Colossians verse by verse. So. It was pretty good, and uh, I think we left off in verse 9, but um, I uh, appreciate everybody coming, those listening, and uh, here at Faith Bible Church, as we know, and others might not, that we, we search the scriptures and enjoy and find peace in study and learning the Bible instead of feel-good messages. We uh, let the Bible... Um, interpret itself comparing scripture with scripture and we study to show thyself approved like in second timothy 2:15, um and uh for those who are listening uh, this god's word is for everyone this is for every person that wants to pick up his word and learn it's not just for the hierarchy and whoever thinks that they can just it's for everyone so if you want to learn and study and share with others that that's what it's about. Well, reading individ you know, individual relationship with Christ and reading and finding out the scriptures and seeing if finding out if they are so. All right. So um, in Colossians, we went over everything, how it started. Um, the Apostle Paul wrote this book while he was in jail to... The Colossians, but he actually directly didn't set up the church in Acts 19. We find out that he was two years in uh, Ephesus at the school of Tyrannus and that he uh, was teaching people from all over Asia. And one of them people more than likely was Epaphras, where he went back to his hometown in Colossae and he started up the church in Colossae, which they were steeped in paganism, mythology, all that, you know, the stuff that was going on, all the uh, pagan worship. So he was able, through God's word, the mystery, to switch them people up and get them to learn the, the, the grace message and the mystery. So um, Epaphras, uh, when the Apostle Paul wrote the letter, he was in jail with Timothy, and they learned. So he heard of Colossae, and he ended up... As we see in chat, I think verse, uh, verse uh, 4, in chapter 1 in Colossians, we see that he, that he heard of them and then he, uh, while Timothy was in jail with him, he wrote the letter and I'm sure Epaphras sent the letter. And, they were, and then we see in verse 7 that as he also learned of Epaphras, so they learned of Epaphras and uh, he so that's something that we could see today that the Apostle Paul had a he that was a he was able to get a person and that person went back to his hometown and set up a church and that's where we have the Colossians and that we see that the Apostle that uh, the Apostle Paul is warning the Colossians we seen that last time that in chapter 2 he is warning, uh, Colossians chapter 2, he's warning in verse 8, um, to be aware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And in the same chapter we see that in verse 16, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. And then in verse 
18, let no man beguile you of, of your reward in, in the voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. So he's got a threefold warning for them. And, um, you know, not to get hung up on the Sabbath in the six, in verse 16. So, and, um, so these, so Colossae was steeped in paganism and it was able to get out of that and learn the mystery. So that's where we left off in verse nine. And I want to, um, so, and it's, a, and it's only a few miles away from uh, Ephesus, the, uh, the uh, town of Colossae. So, let's go. You know what? Let's, I wanted to go to, let's go to Romans chapter 8. I wanted to start here because this was uh, Romans chapter 8, 18. This is a verse that... I... Uh, really love reading and I'm sure this is what the Colossians when they heard this they were full of you know full of the just the, all the things we have in store for us chapter 8 verse 18 well we can do verse 17 chapter Romans chapter 8 verse 17 and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs so we in the verses before, you know, we're uh, we are led by the Spirit of God, but we're heirs, joint heirs. That's what the body of Christ is. That's not like Israel, where they're waiting for a king. We actually have a head, which is part of the body, and we're joint heirs. We're going to be joint heirs with the Lord, and uh, if so, that we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. So, in verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I'm sure when the Colossians heard that, they, they were just very appreciative and were thankful for that, as we should today, because we're going to suffer. You know, we suffer daily, and that's just a verse that I had in my, in my heart, these... Uh, I wanted to share that because I'm sure that's what the Colossians um, were feeling as well. So we can go back to Colossians. Just wanted to share that. And all right, start off where we left off. For this cause, and you know, the Colossians had a lot of love too. So now he's getting. Apostle Paul is getting to where he's for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you so we shouldn't we should always be praying for each other and um, always which a lot of us do but praying is very important and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will so he wants us to he wants us to have the knowledge of his will and he's got a few things for knowledge of his will one of them is first Timothy 2 4 that all men should be that he wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth and we have first Corinthians chapter 2 and um, verse 5 through through 10 um, you know what let's go there to first Corinthians chapter 2 and I like to flip through the scriptures you know we have a little muscle memory so we can just be flipping when we're on our own studying because that is what God wants us to be doing today too he wants us to be studying first Corinthians chapter 2 and we know a lot of us know a lot of these verses but um, uh, we can start in chapter in verse 6 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a, minister, in a mystery. There goes that, the mystery. That's one of the things the Lord wants us to have knowledge of. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, if they would, they would not have crucified the Lord, uh, the Lord of Glory. So they, they, we are. That's another thing that we want to 
to know the knowledge of his will that today is something different today is not because he had a secret to have us rule in the heavenlies with him and to be have a heavenly hope and that's uh something that he wants us to know today um back in Colossians you can go to Colossians chapter 3 and you could see that um, verse 12 put on therefore the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long-suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. We should be forbearing and forgiving one another. And the verse 14, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God ruin your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And in verse 16, he wants us to... Um, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and um, just teaching and being you know that's one thing he wants us to do with each other but we are say we are supposed to know what we believe and be able to go to scripture to show others to show what's in the hope of us that's just one thing that as believers we should be doing we should be learning the scriptures if anybody's got a question or a rebuttal we should be able to go okay well let me show you the hope that's in this this is what you could have as well and um and the holy spirit uh, the holy spirit produces the produces in us the knowledge of his will and we're going to see so so that's the uh, knowledge of his will and uh the colossians were not instructed in the law they didn't they, they were instructed in the mystery so they they didn't even know the Old Testament or the New Testament. That's where Paphras comes in, where he taught them. And you could see that in Colossians. If you read Colossians yourself, you'll see in chapter in the same chapter in verse twenty that having made peace through the blood of his cross, him to reconcile all things unto himself. And um, so moving forward with verse nine in chapter one knowledge of his will and all the and all wisdom and spiritual understanding i mean um a lot of you know a lot of uh, believers and or other pe other churches and other people that profess god's word they don't have a real strong spiritual understanding here at this church and grace believers i i know that we have a, uh, a nice strong spiritual understanding not many do and um so we have uh, we already seen in First Corinthians chapter two, vice, ver, you know, five through ten that that's um, that's a understanding of what's going on today. So let's move on. So let's see, verse ten. Now you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, walking worthy. We want to walk worthy and do what we can for the Lord and to be the best that we can be and to be learned in the scriptures and to in front of others and in, in, in out the world to be an example to shine bright like you know shine like lights like the Lord did and we want to be just as the Lord was you know and um, here in a few verses we're going to see get into more of that but um, and to be all pleasing I mean we yeah, there's time to let people know that, uh, you know, that there's false teachings and all that, but we still should profess, a, like, a peace that's in us, that is, that you can come to us and we can talk these things out and talk and be peaceful and be, and that's that, uh, that's that, um, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and that's not the good works of the law, that's not, you know, for salvation, salvation, that's not the works of, not for, but for reward, that's not for salvation, that's not what that good works is talking about there, that good works to be fruitful and increasing in the knowledge of God, so uh, we can go to and the fruit, we're supposed to be bearing fruit, and we can go to John 
15. And we could see where the Lord himself talks about this. John 15, 4, verse 4. You know, we can just do verse 1, kind of go through it. But John 15, verse 1. The Lord talks about the fruit. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 4. Abide in me. So we're supposed to be abiding in Christ. And I in you, as the branch, cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, which is the Lord Jesus. Um, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without, ye, without me ye can do nothing. Without the Lord we can't bear fruit. We, can't, we, we need the Lord to be able to bear fruit and to the fruits of what were not the labor of salvation, but the labor of, you know, the knowledge of his will and you know, spiritual wisdom and understanding. Yeah. Um, I think the key to what you just said mm -hmm. is verse 3. You know, a lot of us like, are in Christ, but we don't keep ourselves clean in the Word. Mm -hmm. Just being in Christ ain't enough. Mm -hmm. We have to apply the Scripture. In order to yeah. bear fruit. And verse 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken of. And we don't keep ourselves clean in the word, or we don't stay in the word, it's impossible for us to bear fruit. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought. Agreed. No. I, uh, it's, you, you have to know where, you know, to be in the word, God put his word above all his name. So it's, uh, you're right. To be in the word and to be able to. To learn what God wants us to do today to be able to bear fruit. So yeah, thank you. And um, so that's a verse that you could show that the Lord Jesus Christ himself was talking about fruit. And um, we all know Galatians. We can just go there. Galatians chapter 5. So Galatians chapter 5. And we know that Galatians were steep in legalism. Galatians chapter 5 and we know this of the uh, the fruits and um, that the flesh lusted against the spirit and we know these verses and the, we should walk in the spirit so um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 this I say then walk in the spirit that you should not fulfill the lusts of the flesh so then they, they list the lusts of the flesh and uh, the works of the flesh, which in verse 19, um, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, you know, it just goes on and on for murders, drunkenness, revelings. These are all the works of the flesh. These are all things that are not bearing fruit. Okay? Now, when you jump there and go to verse 22, this right here will bear fruit. This right here will just make you what we've been talking about. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is love. You know, love is charity. Is very important. Joy. You know, the Apostle Paul is always telling us to rejoice. In Philippians, he's, it's a constant thing of the fruit that we're supposed to rejoice because of the peace that we know that we're established in the heavens. That joy, just just knowing that you have a, a spot, a fellow airship, should that fruit right there, you should be able to be at peace at things that are going on. Because he was in jail writing this. And it wasn't a rinky-dinky jail. It was Supermax, you know. For those that understand, he was in the big boy jail. And of the and in the worst part of the big boy jail. So, you know, he had things going on. So, there were... You know, peace, long suffering, that's, you know, patience, another word for patience, gentleness, we want to be gentle with each other, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. So these are the fruits that we've gone over, but we can always go over again for edification. 
These are the fruits. Um, and we are saved to be fruitful. That's what we're saved. When we're saved, we're saved to be fruitful in these, in these, uh, you know, what's what they're talking, what's talking, what's the uh, going on in Galatians chapter five. And um, if you love the Lord and a true believer, you are to let the Spirit control you. If you're not under, you know, because we are not under the law. We won't, you know, you won't steal and commit all the, you know, crimes if you're being led by the Spirit. You know, you want to let the Spirit lead you. And because, uh, you know, a lot of things that God's doing for us, it's all been Him. You know, He just wants us to believe. And, and He tells us to stay diligent in His Word. So this, we are definitely led by the Spirit. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of people talk about happiness and happiness is kind of like it's not the you know it's happiness is a result of your circumstances you know where you have a nice car big house you have things but that's not joy that's something different than joy joy is something that's deep it's a deep thing of fruit that when you take it out to the world someone sees the actual joy and not just the supposed happiness that you have because it reminds me of a of a um of a comedian uh robin williams and robin williams was the best of the comedians on improv and he killed himself you know and um i'm pretty sure he wasn't a believer but he just because of what i can remember but he was a funny guy you know he was supposed to be happy but he actually, if you're going to kill yourself, then you don't have joy. So that was, I always think of that because there's a lot of people that profess to be happy and to be this and that. But he obviously didn't have the joy of the Lord because he probably wouldn't have done that. To, you know, and he was the funniest of them all from what I understand. So that's just a, a little tidbit that I remember about him. So... And we are to increase in the knowledge of God. Um, let me go back to Colossians. Oh. I swear I I prepared so much. And I want to go into it. I don't even know if we're able to make it. I, uh, yeah. So, um, Colossians. Uh, we're in verse 10 still, so... In the increase in the knowledge of God. That's the same thing we've been talking about. I mean, there's how many... I mean, we have friends and family and other church people that we know. Are they... You know, there's a lot of people that they say they love the Lord, but they don't want to increase in the knowledge of the Lord. You know, and then 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You know, they want to stay with the milk. They don't want the meats. A lot of we want... What you want is to be able to... Just want that meat. You want that... You know, that that good stuff you want that steak you want that hearty you want to get the most that you can out of the word and sadly a lot of you know today what's going on today is that's not what's happening and here in you know um faith bible church there's a lot of people that want that meat and that and they were that's you know and the corinthians were falling short of that you know they were just infinite believers and you know, we're satisfied with being saved, but not trying to learn more and what God, what the Lord's really doing. Because this is a nice size book that we could be getting into, you know. So there's a lot here that we can learn. And so, and um, we're definitely, you know, it's, there's, the Bible fits so beautifully, you know. And we all should be growing in this knowledge daily. So we, uh, it's definitely appreciative of this church and the fellowship that's here and i also wanted to i forgot but i wanted to thank uh paul belbach i know he's got ordained but he's the one who i listen to and because i study on my own i wasn't coming to church but he's the one i listen to as you guys already know that i listened to him and he was saying how important fellowship is and he's the reason why i came back just for listening to one of his um one of his services and uh i've appreciative of that so um thankful for that but all right verse 11 colossians so we're just kind of moseying along here um strengthened with all might according to the glorious power 
unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. There we go. We have the patience, the long suffering, joy, and with joyfulness, um, strengthened with all might. Because um, what does Romans five six say? We, we were without strength. We were without strength, and Christ died for us. And um, Romans chapter eight verse three. You know where the law failed because of weakness of the flesh. You know, and that's you know the power of God. Is, within, is we're supposed to use the power of God. The power of God is what does a lot of things. You know, he, the power of God is what opens the eyes of others so they can come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, we're to be teaching it, but it's actually the Lord that will open their eyes. And, you know, we need God's power. Nothing can happen without God's power. And, um, you know, the long-suffering and patience, you got Ephesians... You know, Ephesians 4, 2, where with all lowliness and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. So, that's what the Colossians, you know, and um, and he's telling the Colossians this, that they should, because uh, they were def definitely had a lot of love going on, you know, just for, for being pagan and then just switching. You know, he's, I'm pretty sure he was grateful that the fruits of his, late, you know, his fruits that he was able to get, a whole church that he didn't even know, you know, until he heard about it. So he's like, oh, wow. So people that uh, heard the word and they started a whole church by themselves, over there, you know, the help of the Lord, obviously. But, you know, I'm sure he was really grateful about that. And um, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father. See, you know, we always are giving thanks to the Father. We pray to the Father, which made us meet. Which is another word for qualified. God has qualified us. We are not qualifying nothing. Nothing of ourselves. It's God doing the qualifying. That's that word meet. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We're to be partakers. Um, the Colossians, you know, and us, you know, sinners by nature. And we were dead in sins, Ephesians 2 says. So that, you know, that we were, we were done for. You know, and, um, without the, and God qualifying us. You know what, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and see that real quick. God the Father had redeemed and qualified us through and in Christ to be saints in light. You know, and the God is light and there's no darkness in him. That's that verse. So, but let's see this qualification. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 5. Not that we are sufficient. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. That's God giving, making us sufficient. This isn't none of ourselves. Who also, verse 6, have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, which is the law, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The Holy Spirit. So, um, we are children of light, First Thessalonians says. And, um, let's see, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now, that's that positional, you know, the, um, Apostle Paul uses, but now, are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of, spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So we, you know, we're children of light now. We're not, we were in darkness, but now we're in the light. And, you know, God, you know, reveals and opens the heart. You know, you got to, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, you know, God, um, we, you know, uh, verse 4, that's where the God of this world, you know, and um, in the verse before that, he was saying that we were lost. And that's, a, and with that word lost, it's just a four little word, but that's just a word that pierces it should pierce when you think of that and you're like, oh, is there a God or 
is there, you know, should I be serving God? You know, and there's people out there, uh, the vast majority are lost. And that's just like, imagine if you were lost anywhere in the woods, how would you feel? Well, that's how this world is. They are out in this dark world, in darkness, where their God is Satan, and a lot of them don't even know it, and they're just lost. And that's where the knowledge of His will God wants us to be able to bring as many lost back to the light. Obviously, with God uh, qualifying them. Because, you know, God does the opening. He's the one who, you know, the Father reveals in Matthew 16. and Acts 16 with Lydia, he, he, the Lord opened her eyes. And the Lord does a lot of, he does that. So, you know, God, God reveals. He's the, he's the one who reveals. So... I mean, think about that when you see another lost person, like uh, which are everywhere, and it's like, man, I am truly grateful to be where I'm at, you know, and I have to do something because that's the the Lord wants. That's our knowledge. That's what He wants us to do and grow in the knowledge of His will, spiritual understanding. That's what you know, as grace believers, and it's just tough, but that's just how it, you know. That's. We can do it, so it takes one step at a time so we can not be babes on that milk. We want that meat, so, all right, so, moving forward, all right, from Colossians, uh, back in chapter 1, we're in verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son so the power of darkness he's delivered us out of that and uh jesus obviously we know had power over forgiveness of sins mark 2 tells us but delivered he rescued from that lost state he rescued us first thessalonians 1 10 says and it's not just a in this context it's not just you're just rescued we're rescued once and for all this is a there's no going back once you got rescued you ain't gonna get unrescued <laughs> you're with the lord now you're fellow heir now so if you choose to to live carnally like you know like the corinthians and that's you then you're just missing out on what on the uh where we were where we seen there and um yeah that you're gonna miss out on your fruit and you're gonna miss out on all the good things because of the, I think it was of Dave Stewart that I heard that the first thing in your Christian walk is the first thing that happens is that you get saved. That's the first thing that happens. You get saved and then everything else comes after. There's no working and all these the good things that you have to do. Then you maybe you're saved. It's the first thing that happens. You get all this which just was covered in a few minutes that we're talking just by getting saved right away the first thing so that's definitely you know he rescued us and this is a once cannot be undone I think it's Romans 8 38 it's just can't be separated so um, and that word translated there so delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated that's another word for transport transport that's position where we're out of the darkness and into the light into the heavenly spectrum of things and our, into our eternal citizenship you know and um let's see you know the powers of darkness paganism that's what the colossians were in then they got out of that and they found that position that epaphras had showed them through the apostle paul there in acts 19 in ephesus so um you know satan is called the prince of the power of the air and um uh let's see Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And this is Philippians, where this is the Rejoice book, where the Apostle Paul is constantly telling them to rejoice. And, you know, and, uh, you'll definitely be grateful that you, if you follow these steps, you'll definitely be on a better path. Of, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And here we go again. For our conversation is in heaven. 
what the citizenship our conversation another word for citizenship is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ who shall change verse 21 who shall change our vile body so our bodies will be changed that if ye may be that it may be fashioned like unto his christ's glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself the Lord has done things for himself and you see in a couple verses here you know that how awesome the Lord really is so our conversation and citizenship is already established in heaven so that's the beauty of it all all right so I'm moving forward all right so verse 14 in whom that's Christ we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins and uh, Hebrews 9 22 without the shedding of blood there's never been you know uh, in Hebrews 9 22 it says that the shedding of what you know there's there is ne there is never without the shedding of blood there has never been a forgiveness of any sin there's, there's no without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins the blood, you know, the life is the flesh. The life of the flesh is in the blood. It's something about the blood that's it has to be done, has to be shed. I mean, you see in Adam and Eve when you know when they sinned, God had to kill an animal and create coats of skins for them. It was automatic that He had to shed the blood. There was it was right away. Sin is so vile and so disgusting that He 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 has to kill an animal just to. You know that's where how it was before so yeah you have to shed blood you know and uh, that's the blood animal sacrifice and you know and um so and we know that Abraham you know Job you know the, they had altars the priesthood when and then it started getting a little more technical with the priesthood and the law and Moses and Aaron there and you know Aaron and his descendants you know, and they had this, this is all about shedding blood. They had so many sacrifices they had to do. And though a lot of those were types of Christ, which is to come. And that Christ now, who's the ultimate sacrifice, you know, you know, redeemed us and got us back from that, you know. And throughout history, Satan has been trying to do the same thing, trying to be counterfeit. He's just trying to do, you know, what did they do? They, um when he had Molech and the pagans you know they were always killing you know they probably were drinking blood or whatever they were doing but you know they were killing you know passing through the fires of Molech and their own sons and they were just I don't know what they I don't even see how you can even <laughs> you know so you know and this is all you know all this ain't just this is all walk all peoples throughout the world were doing stuff like this so Satan's got his hands in everything so the blood is important there's something about the blood that you know if, you, if it's not shed then we, you know we're and um, I think uh, we can go to Romans chapter 3 take a look at that real quick and sacrifices stopped after Christ died that was it. There was no more. Romans chapter 3. Verse 23. And this is just a verse on redemption. Because we're redeemed. And chapter 3, verse 23. Yeah, sacrifice is stopped after Christ's death. So, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of glory God. We hear that. But that you know, a lot of people don't want to believe that. You know, there's the moralizers, the immoralizers, and the religious man. You know that Romans talks about. But we've all sinned. Everyone's a sinner. God sees everyone as not good. You know, not when they're not identified in Christ, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everything is in Christ Jesus, um, whom ha whom hath set forth. To be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare so there goes his faith in his blood it was, that's to declare his righteousness 
for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So it's that blood that, you know, and remission is forgiveness, in other words, for forgiveness and pardon. So, um, and, uh, and Peter says in Acts 4 that it's Christ alone. You know what? Let's look at that. Acts chapter 4. That's pretty good. Acts chapter 4. Peter and Paul were saying, we know that Paul does, and Peter does as well. Acts chapter 4. Uh, verse 2, or verse 12, verse 12. And this is when um, Peter is addressing the Sanhedrin. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So, through his blood, there's, no, there's nothing else. You know, there's no, there's not Buddha, there's not, and we all know this, but there's, you know, Buddha's there. Yeah, none of none of the Muhammads. None of these. They weren't. They didn't have a a hundred percent man, hundred percent God. Where he predestinated this, and he's the creator, and that he came and died for us, and it was all prophesied. You know, prophesied in Genesis three. He was prophesying it, and um, yeah, the, we, we're definitely in the. It's all through his blood. Ephesians one seven talks about it too. So. There's none, there's nothing else. So, if you ever want to wonder, I mean, it, it was just, you know, the people, I, don't, I forgot what they call them, but, like, they believe that there's nothing after this. Then what do you, you know, how could you live like that? If there's nothing, if you believe there's nothing after, then when you die, then what is, you know, how can, you, there's, like, no hope in that. So... We know that we got, we are definitely know that uh, we have hope. So, back in Colossians, and we can rest assured in God's word, because he put his word above all his name. And then God, and the Lord Jesus has a very powerful name. Every knee shall bow. So, Colossians, verse 15. All right, here we go. Getting into some, uh, some good stuff here, huh? Verse 15, for by him, the Lord Jesus, oh no, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So he is the image of the invisible God. So the triune Godhead is invisible and he's the one who's manifested. He does all the, he's the one that comes out of the, tri, of the threefold. And he steps out and he starts doing things. And he's the one and it's all for himself. You'll see in a couple of verses later. But, you know, they say, oh, you, you know, Exodus chapter 33. You know, you, you can't, the Lord says that you can't see my face and you can't, you, if you see my face, you won't live. You'll die. You know, God the Son steps out of the Godhead to identify with man. He does this for us, you know. Only, um, so in, um, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, there's this thing called theophanies. I learned this from Pastor Kurth. Uh, I, th I might be saying it wrong. Theophany, where the, the theophany, yeah, no, uh, that's a visible manifestation to humankind of God or God. So the Lord Jesus, back then, I mean, he wasn't called Jesus. He's he's all he's God the Son. So you know, the Triune is God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. But God the Son, He showed Himself a few times. And we have three examples. One in Genesis 18, where Abraham sits with the three men. And he, He's feeding them, you know, the fatted calf. And He gets them. And that's one where he's, it's, it's the Lord. It's God that He's talking to. And it's got to be God the Son that He talks to. And then you have in Genesis 30, 32 where Jacob is wrestling with a man, you know, all night he's wrestling. I, I didn't get too much in. I don't know if he's physically wrestling with him, but he's wrestling with this guy. And it ends up being the Lord. And the only one, and if the Lord Jesus is the one that steps out of the 
um, Godhead, then it's got to be then it's got to be God the Son. Um, and then in Joshua, which is one of my favorites, this is how I learned from Pastor Kurt that in Joshua chapter five, um, Joshua, you know, saw a man with his sword drawn, and he he's like, "Are you for me, or are you for us, or are you for get, are you against us?" And he's uh, and um, he quickly learns that they're uh, that he's not against them, and that he learns that he's the captain of the host. I mean, he's above all the angels. He's the Lord, and he's so, and that's that's the Lord. He steps out for us, you know. And this firstborn that you see in verse fifteen is that it's relating to he has been around since eternity past. He's not just been born, you know, in the Lord Jesus. He's always been around. He's the firstborn. He's the one who created everything. He's always been around, and that's what that's referring to. When God the Son left the Godhead, He has always been God. Jesus has always been able, and He's always been able, when He, when he was Jesus here, um, uh, He was he was 100% God, He was 100% man. But he was, when He was doing all the miracles and healing people and stopping, I mean, just the one where He was able to, they asked Him what manner of man this is, because He was able to stop the storm. And he had complete control over all that power. He had power. He was able to use it whenever. And he was able to use it the correct way at all times through his deity. And has never let his man get in, interfere like us. If we had that power, what would we do with it? We'd probably abuse it, you know. And he knew what to do with it. And he never let that get in his way. So, um, yeah, if you, and the Lord, John 14... You know, you've seen me, then you've seen the Father, and uh, we should bear the image in Christ. So that, so He is the image of the invisible God, and we want to be like that image. You know, like the Lord. There's a few verses that uh, we want to be the new man. Colossians, we're in Colossians. Let's see, Colossians three verse ten. Just a few chapters. Colossians three verse ten. We can do verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed, in knowledge, and after the image of him that created him. We want to be, you know, the Lord is the image of the invisible God, and we want to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on that new man. So, and I have, I think I can fit this in five minutes. Well, but... All right, we'll go to verse 16 in chapter 1, Colossians. So now we see that the Colossians, he's telling all the Colossians this, you know, that they have been delivered out of the power of darkness in whom they have redemption, you know, and now he's going into God's, you know, the superiorities of Christ, who is the image of the invisible God. And now, here we're going into some powerful, you know, in verse 16, for by him, the Lord Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him for him. I mean, for anybody that doesn't want to see, oh, you know, the Lord Jesus, oh, he's not God, he's not, like, then what, then God's word says he created everything, so he's got to be God, you know, so, and there's a lot of verses here, he's God, so this is one proving that he was there in times past, he was there in the councils of saying, hey, we're going to do this, you know, I, someone's got to die, and someone's got to die for humanity's sins, and someone's got to, and, and we're going to have this secret, and then we're going to reveal the secret through Paul, this was, Christ was all back there, God the Son was back there, and with all that. And um, and uh, if I can remember the verses, I mean, in Genesis one one, that's the Lord Jesus. That it's the first verse of the Bible is got the Lord Jesus and um, God the Son in there, where He's the Creator. John one, as we know this one, you know, in John one through verse fourteen, you read that, that the Word was made flesh, that that Word is the Lord that created all things. Um, and uh, Titus, let's go to Titus chapter 2. 
So we know that Genesis, and John is one that we know that John is calling the Lord Jesus God. So we know that. I'm just trying to save time. Um, Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope, which is, you know, our heavenly hope, the rapture, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the great God. He's, he's being called God there. So, you know, and that's the, and our, you know, and he's our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 talks about it. And, um, you know, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, we know that he created all things and the mystery was hid. He was there. The Lord Jesus Christ created, in John 1, you could see that he created everything out of nothing. He just spoke it and it just became. There was none that was made before him. And um, he humbled himself at the cross. You know, he imagine... You know, we talk about no other religions that they they can't they, they can't come close to this. Only the Creator can redeem us, made of flesh and blood, to be the ultimate sacrifice and save us with the forgiveness of sins. He came down and let them people kill him, let the Jews kill him. He could have stopped it. He's God, but he had a purpose that was before, and no one knew that we've seen today that if the that if the uh, the powers that be knew they wouldn't have killed him. They wouldn't have killed the Lord of glory. And that's where we see now that, you know, he had a plan of redemption. And um, he created all things in heaven. The stars, the governments, everything that you see. Imagine the shooting stars, all that. Everything that you could just physically see. The beauty that's all this, even on earth. All the plants. All the the majestic, you know, the mountains where you can see all the, all the, um, even the waterfalls. I mean, do you see how big some of them waterfalls are? Everything that you see, the Lord created. And, you know, if you look up in the skies and you see them stars and you see the galaxy, the Milky Ways, and you see the shooting, you see all that. And it's like, and you see how it's perfectly fit and beautiful up there. And that's how you know that something created us. You know, in Romans, God says that through my creation, you could see, you know, that everything that what I've done. And, um, every, you know, he's created everything under heaven. He's laid the foundations of the earth in Hebrews 1.10 with describing the Lord Jesus, you know. And I have lots more to talk about, but I think I can... Um, go into that next time in verse 16 but uh you know i do want i do want to do one more verse i want to go into acts 2 acts chapter 2 and then we'll be done so we can get the the whole scope of who this person jesus is he's not just some guy that lived on earth he's the creator his he He's everything, you know, we see in the verse after that, that everything is consists of him. Everything is intact because of him. The molecules, he's everything. He's all in all. So, um, Acts chapter 2, verse 22, and we'll close at this. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsels and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. So, the determinate counsel. See, this is... I forgot how this went, but this is basically that the Lord was there, God was the, was there before before the world began, 
and the, the, through the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, we have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain him. See, he planned this. That's what they're saying. That it was a plan. He already determined that this was going to happen. And you have slain him and killed him. That right there is a really deep passage that I just learned. And I, I mean, you skim through it, but when you really see it, you're seeing that this is that it's that determinant counsel. Like this is before you even you know thought you before you even woke up out of the bed before you even knew what was what. God already had this in plan. They thought that they just killed him and Satan won, but no, that's not what happened. So glory to the Lord and thank you. And uh, I'll do a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, letting us be able to. Um, have your word, you know, listen to, and we appreciate that everybody here and that um, the Holy Spirit opens our hearts that we can leave here today and share your glorious, your glorious word to the lost and try to bring them to come to light and know your, your will and your knowledge, Lord. And um, we're grateful for everything that we have in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah.